is the, um, the structure of the test itself. You have four sections, the analytical writing assessment, where you are given an argument of sorts, uh, a proposal, a plan, um, and your job is to critique it, is to analyze um, what kind of logical flaws there are, what kind of assumptions are being made, and what the results of these assumptions could be, and how you could potentially suggest ways to fix these assumptions. Um, uh, that's, that's sort of in line with evaluating an argument, and this has a lot to do with critical reasoning as well. There is also a section called integrated reasoning. We will look at the question types and what kind of, um, what kind of things are tested there in a bit. Essentially, there are 12 questions here, and you have 30 minutes. The score, again, is from 1 to 8. Quantitative section has 37 questions, 75 minutes. A verbal has 41 questions, 75 minutes. Um, again, I will talk more about these sections in a bit. But essentially, quant and verbal together constitute your score of 200 to 800. Now, when you think about the test holistically, right now, as the test is, you cannot skip between sections. You cannot decide which section um, you want to you know, perform or you want to do first. Um, you're stuck with the order that you are given. You will have a break after integrated reasoning, an eight-minute break, and another eight-minute break after quantitative reasoning. So effectively, including the registration process, including the process, the, the initial few minutes where you sit and uh, input the universities that you want to um, send your scores to, the entire process, the entire experience of sitting in the on the examina in the examination center and taking the test will take you about four plus hours. Think about that. When was the last time you took a test that was four hours long in one sitting? And it's not an easy test. It's a very exhaustive test. If you, if you notice, you start with the essay and then go into an integrated reasoning, which is quite an intense section by itself. And then you go into the sections that actually weigh on your final 200 to 800 score. So the way it's designed in itself is meant to test your ability to withstand tremendous amounts of pressure and, you know, and whether you can still perform consistently when you're fatigued. And trust me, you will be fatigued. The best way to experience this is to take a full in test. I'll talk more about that as well. Um, so if you look at the AWA, um, to be quite honest, all you have to do is ensure that you get a score that's above the median score. The median is about 4.5 out of 6. This is not a selection criteria. And that's the fact. So what you want to do is understand how to write these essays effectively um, to get a score of about 5 plus, but not waste too much of your mental resource while doing it. Right? You don't want to be stressing out on the day of the test while writing that essay. The same goes with integrated reasoning. It is a selection criteria, but very rarely. They default to, or rather they turn to the integrated reasoning only when they are not able to make a decision based on all the other aspects that we discussed previously. Right? Um, so you may not want to be gunning at a perfect eight, but make sure you get a score that's above the median. And for that, you don't necessarily have to get every question right. You don't have to stress yourself out while taking the test either. This ensures that you go in with as much mental resource as possible to approach quant and verbal, which are substantial sections. So these are the question types you will see. I would definitely recommend that you go um, online to the to mba.com uh, MBA and um, take a look at the different kinds of questions you have. If you haven't picked up a copy of the official, gu official guide already, do so. Get a taste of what these questions look like. Get familiar with the test. And again, the key to doing really well on the GMAT is familiarity. Uh, again, I will talk about this. I will explain what this means and how to get yourself familiar with every aspect of the test. In quant, we have problem solving data sufficiency. We will look at some examples of this. In verbal, there is reading comprehension, critical reasoning, and sentence correction. Um, sentence correction forms the predominant um, set of questions. They, they are the most number of questions you'll see, uh, followed by critical reasoning and reading comprehension. So uh, on average, not on average, actually in actual numbers, you will see four passages on the GMAT verbal. Um, and you will typically have about three to four questions attached with each passage. Now the problem is with verbal, one of the biggest problems with verbal is that of time management. Uh, we, will, we will look at that. We will look at how to deal with that and why it's a challenge and how to strategize our time to ensure that we spend only the appropriate amount of time for each of these.